to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. 1 Kings chapter 7, please. 13 and 14. Years ago, when God showed me this scripture, it changed my life completely. It, it destroyed mediocrity from my life completely. First Kings chapter 7. It says, and King Solomon, this was the building of the temple. King Solomon sent and fetched out Hiram out of Tyre, the economic hub of the day. He says he was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali. He says, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. The Bible records that he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works of brass. The Bible says, and he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. When you serve kings, you will receive the reward of kings. Is God blessing us this morning? Hmm value and productivity it is important that believers are not only faithful church goers faithful church workers we must trust god to rise to a level of value productivity and competence that will dumbfound principalities and powers is one of the pillars of influence show me a man that is valuable show me a man that is competent show me a man that is productive i show you a man who mediocrity will never be found around him are we blessed? Value and productivity. The third pillar. Hmm. Wisdom and excellence. The third pillar of influence is wisdom and excellence. Daniel chapter 5, please. We'll read from verse 12 to 15. Daniel chapter 5 from verse 12 to 15 this is daniel for as much as an excellent spirit the bible says and knowledge and understanding interpreting of dreams showing of hard sentences dissolving of doubts were found in the same daniel whom the king named belteshazzar now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. We are reading to verse 15. Then Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king spake unto Daniel, Are thou Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of Jerry? I have even heard of thee, influence, right to the palace, the report of Daniel got there. Do you know words are powerful? They can immortalize your presence. You can be in one location and yet the glad tidings of what God is doing in your life can spread all across the globe. When Daniel came, please keep that scripture, he was received because his good works, let's go back to verse 13, had gone ahead of him. Okay, verse 14 now. I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom there is a kind of wisdom called excellent wisdom. It says, oh God, our God, how excellent. Not just how great, how excellent is your name. 15. And now the wise men and the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. A wise man when you read chapter 6 from verse 1 the first three verses chapter 6 of Daniel it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom we're reading to verse 3 and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was what first that the princes might give account to them and the king should have no damage then this Daniel, not another one, this Joshua Selman, this covenant, call your name, I, I, I'm calling my own name there, was preferred above the precedence. 
So someone can be higher than a president. Someone can be higher than the princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over, not the house, the whole realm. Influence that comes through wisdom and excellence. Are we blessed? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, Paul mentoring the church in Ephesus, he was talking about the church, the ecclesia, that spiritual strategy that God invented by his wisdom to bring the kingdom to this side of his, of his, uh, of his, of his sphere, this, this, this side of, of earth, which is, which is a part of his kingdom. He invented a strategy and he called that strategy the church. The church is a strategy. Like you invent a vaccine to solve a problem. The church is a spiritual strategy. It's more than a people. It's more than a gathering. It's more than a location. It's more than just a collective group of believers. The church, the ecclesia, is a spiritual strategy. Please give us that scripture. Ephesians 3 and verse 10. To the intent. This is why the strategy was designed. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multi-sided wisdom of God. The manifold wisdom of God. Are we blessed? Yes. Wisdom and excellence. Do not downplay this. You will never be able to rise to a level of kingdom influence that can bring the reality of the power and the glory of God if you lack wisdom and if you do not sustain the spirit of excellence. The powerful thing about these pillars is that you don't have to be born with them. Through your alignment and through your hunger and through your press, taking advantage of the grace of God, you can step into these things. That means you can walk into something you were not born with. So there are no excuses. Say in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, receive I receive grace for wisdom and excellence. excellence. Next pillar, please. The fourth pillar that controls influence in this kingdom is wealth and abundance. Write it down and think about it while you are writing. Wealth and abundance. Let me show you two disturbing scriptures. Ecclesiastes In fact, let's start with Proverbs 22. We'll read verse 2, then we'll rush to verse 7. I wonder why these scriptures are in the Bible. Look up, please. Ready? Let's read together. The rich and the poor meet together. Look at this. The Lord is the maker of them all. What kind of statement in the name of honesty is this? It would have just said, human beings meet together. God is creator. But he now said the rich and the poor meet together. He's trying to make a statement that the Lord is the maker of them all. God made them as men. They separated themselves into those descriptions. Are you seeing it now? Don't forget our motivation again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let's go to verse 7. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. You see why it's a disturbing scripture? When the Bible talks about ruling... It connects it to wealth. Read with me the first four words. Ready? The first four words. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. Leave whoever the rich rules over. Just the fact our concentration is that it is the rich that is ruling. It doesn't matter who is under. Our concern is that it is the rich that is ruling over. Please keep that scripture there. The rich ruleth over. That's it. That if you sustain the wealth of the kingdom, it can give you a leverage to rise to a position of influence where you can exact dominion over individuals, over a system, over a territory. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Two more scriptures. Genesis chapter 42, 
We'll start from verse 1 and 2, Genesis 42. This is Jacob now, Genesis 42, 1 and 2. Please help us. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, everybody say corn in Egypt. Corn in Egypt. There was corn. There is nothing wrong with corn. The only problem is the location. Just keep that scripture there. It is dangerous when only Egypt has corn because Egypt is not a place that honors God. However, there is, that is the only place that has corn. The Bible says when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt because of the sheer hunger of famine, Jacob said to his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He says, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Now go down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. A prophet without corn will still die. Please listen to this. The only thing that takes the saints to Egypt is hunger. Hunger has a, a power of invitation that you cannot resist. It will draw you from anywhere you are to where you will be destroyed. Was it not because they went to Egypt that they were saved for a while and then later became slaves? Hunger will always take the church to Egypt. I have seen that there is corn. Even though I do not like the location, there is nothing I can do about it. Because if we do not go to that location, although we are prophets, we will die. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, the fourth pillar of dominion and influence. Verse 13. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 13. This wisdom I have seen under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Uh-huh. We're reading to verse 16. There was a little city, so it's talking about a city, and few men within it. The Bible says, and there came a great king against it and beside it, and built great bulwarks against it. Scene 2. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. Everybody say it. Poor wise man. One more time. The Bible says, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet, no man remembered that same, it doesn't talk of wisdom again. Wisdom has finished his assignment. Yet, no man remembered that same poor man. And then here was my conclusion, 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nigeria, Lagos, Covenant Nation, Wafbeck, nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words. So, wealth becomes the trade that carries wisdom to serve it well. The poor man's wisdom is despised. Can I tell you this? I know that there are abuses here and there, and people have made all kinds of things out of what we call prosperity, but in the name of Jesus, reject poverty. Amen. It's an advice. Reject it. <laughs> Think of your children while you are rejecting it. Think of your loved ones while you are rejecting it. I give you an advice by the road of the apostolic and the prophetic in these end times reject poverty it's an individual choice I said before you life and death I said before you blessing and cursing do not allow anyone flatter you into believing that with mediocrity and lack somehow you will still navigate your way to rise to influence it's a joke not in today's world these are the pillars of influence let's do a quick recap before we touch on the last one and then we round up that the first pillar is growth and transformation the second pillar is value and productivity. The third pillar is wisdom and excellence. The fourth pillar is wealth and abundance. The fifth pillar is the supernatural. The ministry of signs and wonders. 
a mysterious pillar that is able to lift the name of Jesus and the banner of his name and his praise across territories. Acts chapter 5 and verse 12 down to 16. Shiba Kasubariata. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all in one accord and in Solomon's porch. We're reading to verse 16. And the rest does not, and of the rest does no man join himself to them. But the people did what? Magnified them. The word magnified here is not a wrong word. Is, is the word that was buttressed in Galatians 1 and verse 24. And they glorified God in me. God can be glorified in and through a man's life. The excellency of your results, the display of the power of the kingdom. When men begin to lift you, then you lift his own name. So it becomes higher than you. He says, and I... If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men to myself. Back to that scripture, please. Acts chapter 5. We're reading now from verse 14. The Bible says, And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter's passing. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. I just sang Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It says to stand in the way. Please give us that scripture. As I just read this, it just touched me. How far from the standard of God today's church is. That a man's shadow, he was not in a crusade, he was passing. Today, blind eyes open and thank God we celebrate miracles. But look the efforts that are dissipated. We call upon God. We clash cymbals. We play keyboard. We sing. We jump. We lay hands on our head. I'm not against those things. But I'm saying look the effort. As though God does not want to show up. There is something we are missing. We need to return to the authentic place of provable power. Dimensions of the grace of God that dumbfounds principalities and powers. You are a ministry here. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Thank God for the trickles of miracles that we see. But in ancient times, we will not even be qualified to be ushers. Not even in the welfare department. Find out the condition that you had to go through. Show us the ancient path. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. I have seen miracles and signs and wonders in my life. I say it with all humility. But do you know every time I read scripture, sometimes I just close my Bible and tears will just come down from my eyes. I say, Lord, who deceived us like this? Apostle Joshua Selman, a great man of miracles. You read your Bible and see that we do not come close to the least spiritual people in those days. Now, this is not condemnation. This is how you are challenged. Men can clap you into dimensions where you plateau in the spirit and stop rising and stop growing. There must be a perpetual hunger and that hunger comes when you compare yourself with the reference of scripture. 
not among yourselves, for they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. The Bible says the shadow of Peter. Shali kaparakusiata. Mandi brando skila pahashkia. That you come and buy a soft drink just because your hand touched someone's shop. As soon as you leave, you brought heaven. Makos kebaratoshia. You come to visit someone, you just sat down on their chair and say, Peace be unto this house. Suddenly, storms, 10 year old storms, they hear your voice like a tornado in the realm of the spirit. Shalom, be still. Church of the Lord Jesus, wake up. Although we have seen the hand of God, let's pat our backs only briefly. There is a lot to do. If we need to rise to a position where the church will not be silent, it will not come by singing. There is a dimension of the supernatural we need to reintroduce. The foundation of the church in Nigeria, please take it higher for me, my spirit is fired up now. Gee. The church in Nigeria, have you read about our fathers? The men and the women who handed this gospel to us. They were men who were not really educated. But they were men who had fire. These were men who met God and they knew they met him. I was watching a video one day and I began to cry. One of the old Yoruba prophets. I don't know how the Holy Ghost led me to that video. And he was talking. And the sheer glory and presence that emanated. I didn't know what he was saying. And honestly, I didn't care. You, you didn't need to be a Yoruba person to be blessed. The power that came from that man. I said, God, what has happened to us? Where did we miss it? This is my final session with you. This has been my obsession. To tell the church, thank you for what you are doing. But let us wake up. If we think we are going to win the world at this pace, think again. There is a dimension of the power of God. This is not for preachers. This is not about ministry. The effulgence of the life and the power and the glory of God. That the Holy Ghost came upon meetings that refused to finish. They were supposed to be two hour meetings. Well intentioned. And someone just raised a song, and that song brought his majesty. And people, there was no preacher again. Ah. Oh Lord, you are my God, Psalm 63 says. Early will I seek you. It says, My soul longs for you, my flesh thirsts for you. It longs for you as in a dry and a weary land where there is no water. Verse 2 is the reason to see thy power and your glory in my life. The same way I saw in the sanctuary. Let me tell you this. This is a generation that seeks for signs. These are not generations who will be loyal for nothing. The generation of our fathers that could be loyal to you, whether they understand you or not. This generation is intelligent enough to say, if you claim that God heals, here is my sick son. I told God, do not send me if all you give me is a sermon. Do not send me if all you give me is a lecture. Do not send me if all I will go with is my brain. Do not send me if all I go with is a song. Let there be a token of your presence upon my life. Let there be a token of your presence upon my hand. Why will I preach and when I'm done we just share the grace and the sick go back sick, the oppressed go back oppressed. Listen. If we do not rise to this level of the supernatural in the body of Christ, a time will come, people will shout amen, but we know they don't believe what we are saying. And can I tell you this? The desperation of men is beginning to push them to look for solutions because men are not fools. If they don't find it with you and they discern God is not with you, they will respect you for who you are, but they will quietly go and look for where to get real solutions. 
Many testimonies we share in church today did not come from church. I'm sorry to say it, forgive me, we'll reconcile after the meeting, but it's true. Because when men become desperate, they can do anything. Don't toy with the desperation of men. I will not watch my son die. If I come to you and you cannot heal the person, that desperation of a mother will push people to go and get solution anywhere. And yet we continue to say Jesus is Lord. We continue to say, since I was young, now I am old. Out of a hundred people, if two people are healed, is that a good assessment? If there are 30 blind people and only two see, yes, we give God glory. But that's not all God can do. This is my obsession. This is why we refuse to get satisfied. The supernatural manifestation of God's power by which God demonstrates his ability to save, to heal, to deliver, to lift, to prosper his people. They are expressions of his love. They are also expressions of his might. Can I tell you this? Our world today is an arrogant world. The spirit that was on Nebuchadnezzar, Darius, the spirit that was on Herod, has now come and is sitting on the kings of the earth. You see the way they cheapen the church now, and they say it with all sense of pride. It's almost as if you are deserving of an award to the degree to which you downplay the church. It's not their fault. There is a dimension of the display of the power and the glory of God that can silence the mouth of all and sundry. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, surely this is the house of God, the gates of heaven. In the days of the generals, there were a few people who sat down and they were mocking, they were making mockery of, of um, Maria Woodward Eater. They laughed at her in her crusade and she looked at them and said, God judge you. The tongue of one of them protruded. They prayed and prayed, it didn't go down. He had to come himself and say, do you know what? I was stupid, now I know Jesus is Lord. She slapped the tongue and it went down. Now, when you have an example like that, that a popular madman on the street of Lagos a popular demonic suddenly he comes under the influence of this kingdom that we so boast about and his life comes under perfect order it is my prayer that we will not only watch miracles and signs and wonders in the life of those who have pressed a bit into God, but that there will be a hunger in us to say, Lord, I'm tired of an ordinary life. I'm tired of just praying and saying things I cannot defend. I'm tired of proposing dimensions about God I do not sustain the grace requirement to defend. I write these things unto you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. I have a few minutes. This is my final session. We are going to pray and I want to pray for you. It is my desire that something will come upon your life. Amen. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down and every ocean roars to the King of Kings. That's the God that we serve. Who is like Him? The Lion and the Lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down and every ocean roars to the Lord of Lords we will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day praise Adonai all the
the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints sing praise. Listen, let there be a desperation in your heart as we pray for the next two minutes. Cry unto God. There is, there is a need, oh God, for my life to be part of the lives that you use to bring down the kingdom, the power, and the glory of heaven. I'm tired of church as it is. I'm tired of religion. There is a hunger in my life. I contend for growth and transformation. I contend for value and productivity. I contend for wisdom and excellence. I contend for wealth and abundance. But in this season, oh God, and in this end time, I contend for the supernatural. Covenant Nation, Wolfbeck, all following and all watching, lift your voice and let's pray. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Someone is crying to the God of heaven. Please pray. back oh God to the days of our fathers in this country some of you even come from those physical families lift your voice and pray here at Wafbeck, Lord we cry for a display of the kingdom the power the glory of God the effulgence of your spirit the anthem of Nigeria says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain Lord we pray that the graces and the mantles that were upon our fathers, the graces and the mantles that founded the church in Nigeria, we cry for a restoration of those ancient mantles. Spring up our wells for a time like this. Someone is praying. Pastors pray. It's time for fire on our altars again. Businessmen pray. A dimension of the wisdom and the excellence of the spirit. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth. Cross darkness the people. But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. It says, Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. We are a praying people. Lift your voice and pray. Something from heaven is about to come upon your life. I assure you by the spirit of the living God. We are still praying. Forget about who is at your left and right. It's time to receive. Wolfpack, a platform for receiving something that can change your life. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. 
We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. This is a move. We need a move. This is a move. Someone is praying, Lord, this is my ministry. This is my life. What you showed me in my dreams and my visions, here at Wavbeck, let it come alive, oh God. Find the flames of my destiny. Find the flames of my ministry. Hey, Palas Kabarata, you who are watching in your homes, watching in your offices, watching online, participate in the prayer. Open up your spirit from the U.S. to the U.K., from Asia to Africa. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let something come upon my life, oh God, that will set me on fire, manifesting the supernatural, signs, wonders, tokens of his presence in my territory, in my community. I, 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 For someone who is trusting God for healing, your health must change. Lord, I came to receive. I came to rise to a new dimension in the spirit. Wafbeck, an encounter with the word, an encounter with the spirit, receiving the supplies for the days ahead. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Listen. I'm only here for a few minutes. Some of you are crying. Do not be ashamed of your tears. I came here with the spirit of revival. I came here with the spirit of grace. Please listen to me. Many years ago, I became sick and tired of religion. I became sick and tired of watching the sick and the oppressed go. Even though I came from a background that was evangelical, I knew there had to be more. My hunger drove me 
to begin to search the scripture and the life of men and women who were mightily used by God in every generation. I always share this story to edify the body of Christ. I speak on this platform to the church universal. There is something that the hunger of a man can do. When you become hungry and desperate for the truth, even in ignorance, the mercy of God honors it. Yes. I remember weeks turning to days, sir. Days turning to weeks. I said, God, you cannot send me to a generation with nothing. What will be my message? And that night, the Lord Jesus Christ came to me when he walked into my room I'm standing there and watching his majesty the one preachers talk about I said my God could I have been able to represent this man if I did not see him I was I was embarrassed by my ignorance of him even though I was preaching he never said a word, yet he said many things. It was then I knew in the realm of the spirit, you've heard me say it, that you do. It entered my spirit. He stretched his hand towards me and a beam of light entered my spirit. How I did not die is a mystery that I will ask him to explain when we get to heaven. And then in another vision, he mandated me. He said, every nation and every territory you go to, there must be someone in that meeting. The light that came from me to you, that light, there has to be someone that that light will land upon. Please help those under the anointing. When this happened at another separate encounter, the Lord spoke to me and said, my son, I give you my presence from this day as a gift. All of a sudden, I see this huge angel standing. And I said, who is this? And he said, this angel will walk with you. I said, what is his name? And he said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. And I said, is this not supposed to be God himself? I was confused. And this is the reason why many times you see some of these manifestations. I explain this thing to you so you don't mix what we are doing with respectfully speaking, some of the excesses you steer around. Because it is important that we give a precedence to the demonstration of the Spirit upon our lives. Lest it be confused. I have stayed faithful to that mandate. That every time God gives me an opportunity to minister to his people. I know that he draws people with the hunger to receive. We have few minutes and I plead for just a few minutes. But there is something that must come upon your life. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. He has come to you, his Israel. Pastor, you know one night I was I was watching William Branham. And while I was watching him, I could see the presence and the glory of God upon that man. And I said, why were people criticizing this man? Because at the later part of his life and his ministry, please help me with the drums, help me with the cymbal. And I was watching him with, with passion. I said, why would such a man be criticized by people who carried so much dimension of God? And I said, Lord, help us to honor the people that you have used. And while I prayed that something happened, suddenly there was like a cold sensation from my head, from my laptop. It started going down gradually, 
gradually over the course of 30 minutes I didn't know what had happened by the next meeting as soon as I went there suddenly I began to see the names of people and I started seeing a lot of supernatural things until then here and there I would walk in the world of knowledge and here and so on and so forth I learned that honor is the key for reception whatever you despise you will never have it even if you are around the proximity of it is one of the reasons why we hardly receive in the body of Christ there is no discernment I want to pray I see the angels of the Lord in this place help them by wisdom oh God heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands let the fire of the Holy Ghost from my left to my right in the name of Jesus the ignition that must come upon lives and destinies name there are many of you the dreams and the visions that you have had you have seen yourself walking in supernatural dimensions that grace is about to step into your life one that grace help them please please help them take that grace in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your destiny I shift you to levels in the spirit dimensions of power dimensions of grace drink of ancient fountains in the name of Jesus the Christ hallelujah now please listen Revelation is a spirit. There is the spirit of revelation. Paul called it the grace that makes all men see. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. There is a grace that can make all men see. I want to pray for you. There are men and women who came to Wafbeck with hunger. Hunger to receive. Spiritual illumination. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, may that grace come upon your life right now. May that grace come upon your life right now. Help her, please. Harusa ziata hashala pando ziaka. Kradaka shala kaso Hallelujah. Please listen to me. The Lord is leading in my spirit, even if it's in 30 seconds, to just say something. This is a vision that I've never shared, but my spirit will not allow me In that vision, I was in a pastor's conference. There were many men of God around this nation and across Africa. I say this to the glory of the Lord and I'm saying it just because of something God wants to do. And while I was there, there were fathers. I didn't know some of them. It looked like some of them had died, but they were still represented. And then among them, I began to see the fathers of faith in this nation. They were seated, but they were in front. Then there were other vacant seats in front of them, but people had not yet occupied them. I said, what is this that I'm seeing? All of a sudden, I saw our great father in the faith, Daddy Adebue, and he was sitting in one of the seats. And he looked through the crowd and pointed me slowly. He said, come. They were serving a meal and he got up from the seat and sat on the ground with the meal and I could see anger and bitterness I was even afraid while I was walking and I was coming out I said what is this this is our father wants to embarrass me and he said climb the stage when I climbed it he said sit down let's eat I said I would never do that I came from a background where I was well trained I will never do that I honor you sir 
you are my father, you are my grandfather, I will not do that. He said, do you respect me? I said, yes. He said, eat. When I dipped my hands, all of a sudden, I came out from that vision. From that day, the creative dimension of the prophetic, the grace to speak and cause things. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, it is never my intention. But I'm saying that so that you will receive. This grace that is on us, we are not the originators of it. It's a relay. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I stand by the God of all flesh and I declare every challenge that has refused to give way over your life. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that challenge is gone forever. Gone forever. Gone forever. Gone forever. Gone forever. Every door that would not open, I speak to it by prophecy. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted. Ancient doors, I speak to those doors, help them please. Ephata, be open. Ephata, be open. I speak to everyone here, trusting God for a job, according to the time of life. I declare by the spirit of grace, return with testimonies. There are people in need of restoration. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. I join my faith with the faith of your pastor, the angel of the Lord over this house, and I decree and declare, whatever has left you that should not leave you i call it by name help them please my god and i command it to return back to you i command it to return back to you lost opportunities lost relationships resources hear the word of the lord return in the name of jesus Can I pray for you? Every seat you should be sitting there and there is another sitting there. I stand by the voice of prophecy. I overturn, I overturn, I overturn until you sit at that seat of destiny. I don't kill, but any man who found that over his dead body that you will rise, that prayer becomes answered. Job said he will deliver you from six things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. I declare over you that every tongue that has risen against you, risen against your life, your ministry, your influence, I stand by the God of heaven. I call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who rides upon the wings of the winds, and I declare in the name of Jesus, that tongue is judged forever. Everyone here trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, by this time next year, we declare by the Spirit of God, by this time next year, return with your miracle. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Pastor, thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate you and your dear wife. And I thank this assembly for the honor and the privilege to bring the word of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus' name. from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching